accept this well. We need dynamic connection. There's a the interaction part of shy that contains all the shy. If we the adjustment can be size of different muscles. Yes, that's right. So the interaction term should contain like shy one, shy two. Yeah, so it's written as psi, right? So psi is the expanded at the basis, psi r, phi r. So it will give it interaction at all the psi r's. So psi to the n, right? this will become like uh, phi r1 to phi rn, psi r1 to psi r. This is the kind of interaction. So these are the sum coefficients and these are the fields. This is for the simplicity of psi. Yeah, I mean the psi by definition contains all of this. So psi to the end means this. That you have to expand in the basis. Like some the tires are the dynamic and And so this is a coefficient. This is of course just now. Times this end. So, so what is the status of Python independence in this progression? So, before you choose some uh, classical Python and you expand, is it totally background independent or you have some? No, it's not totally background independent in the sense that these coefficients depend on the background. Because this has to be evaluated, uh, this involves conformal field for equalization function. Right? So, it depends on which conformal field for you choose. Right? So in this sense, it's not background independent it, uh, because this psi equal to zero corresponds to the initial starting point of okay. So what background independence should mean in this context is that if you take say, two different conformal field theories, you formulate the theory in one conformal field theory background, and then for some specific classical solution of psi, you should get the other conformal field theory. Right? So that now if we expand psi around the non-trivial classical solution, not around psi equal to zero, but around the you have an action. That action, that the action that you get by directly formulating the screen field for in the new background, should be related by field definition. Okay. So that's that's the meaning of background independence in this. Okay. And it has been done for marginal part So for if you have two conformal field theories which can be which differ from each other marginal deformation, then one can show that you can take the CFT around one background. CFT are the other background, and those two can be related by field But it's certainly not manifestly background independent, because all these coefficients depend on the choice of one field theory, which is a starting background. And uh, this tight uh, pole divergence and we cancel them, we have to choose some specific CFT uh, I mean, for the which corresponds to the minimum. Uh, so that yeah. has some restriction. Yeah, we'll see what it uh, requires. Right? Sometimes if you have enough superspecting. Then for all CFTs, the time holds will cancel. So you don't have to do anything. If you don't have enough support symmetry, then it may happen that the time holds never cancel. Okay. Which is also another situation. And then there's an intermediate situation. That the time holds will cancel only for some CFTs, but not for everything. And it may even cancel for something which is not a CFT. That may also happen. Yes, that's it. It's for different by one the portions which are exactly that's other questions. But so just to comment on this, so you said that the phi depend on the choice choice of the CFT. Yes. But when you work with the psi uh, directly, so with the text We don't if you work just with psi, not with uh, without the uh, expansion? Yes, yeah, so the structure of the action, of course, is the same, looks the same. Yeah. But that is misleading because the definition of this equals a choice of background and uh, choice of the inverse space, and you have to actually, when you think of this as explicit coefficients, right? you have to compute them in a given form. So, in that sense, it's certainly not manifested background anyway. It's not a purely guaranteed that if you have two different conformal field theories, you formulate a theory on one conformal field theory background, the formal theory on other conformal field theory background. The fact that there is a theory definition that relates the two does not manifest the objects. That is something you have to show. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me 
the Rimandu Valley reads yesterday. So we are looking for a classical solution, zero moment of classical solution in the NS sector because we are uh, uh, looking for the, the possible choice of vacuum within the vacuum solution. And what we did was to say that we introduce this point to the psi k, this is the solution to order gs to the k. Okay, which basically means that it satisfies the following relation u b psi k plus some k equal to 1 to k And then we try to solve for psi k iteratively. Okay. And you arrive at an expression, an iterative relation between psi k plus 1 and psi k, which was the following, the following form. So psi k plus 1 was minus b naught plus over b naught plus 1 minus e. Solve this equation. Right? What it means to solve this equation. 
Now, first we, can, we see that this equation is actually a finite dimensional matrix equation. Right? Because the number of L0 plus equal to 0 states with k equal to 0 is only finite. Right? It is created by oscillators acting on the vacuum. So you can take phi L plus 1 to be an arbitrary linear combination of the basic states and simply try to solve this equation. A matrix equation that will be to solve. So, another way of saying is that if you take any state in h minus 1, okay, why h minus 1? Because you are looking at the NS sector states, those number 2, we must have. Plus 
can also be expanded in a basis of states. Of those number. <coughs> okay, both are those number two because already there is those number two. Here, let's say this is those number two, this is also those number two. So it never is a one zero. So from this we see that there are equal number of equations as there are coefficients. Right? The number of coefficients lambda i is equal to the number of basic states pi. And it's the same number of equations that I'm getting. Is this clear? However, this doesn't necessarily guarantee that you can always solve this equation. Okay, and we'll see why. This part I can write as an early vector of gi and chi in Yes, you can. But uh, let's not do that right now. We keep it like this. So to see that there can be potential problem, suppose a VI, suppose VI is a VI state pregnancy. Okay, this means VI to be Okay, here there will be a minus sign, but of course zero doesn't change the sign. So then here in this term over here. You can put QB, you can pass QB through C0 minus. QB C0 minus anti commutator is not 0, but as we have discussed several times, this anti commutator doesn't have a C0. And so it vanishes simply because you don't, you, you don't have enough C0 modes to saturate this number. This has no C0 mode because it's aligned by B0 minus. This is also aligned by B0 minus. You have to get it to be the H minus 1. So, there is no place where you can get a C0 minus in this matrix element and there is a vanishes. So if UV value is 0, then left hand side is 0. So this would mean that This must be this must vanish. <coughs> well, this must vanish to order g s to the n plus one. But now you see that this doesn't involve these coefficients at all. Okay? Because the left hand side are identical values. So this is a condition that either holds by itself without the ability to practice these coefficients, or you cannot solve the equations. Is this clear? Yes. See, so this condition cannot be satisfied by adjusting this coefficient as lambda i because lambda is not appear. Right? So this condition then has to be satisfied in a script by itself without invoking the lambda i. It does involve however the well I'll come back to that. Okay, what what else? But at least you can see that there's no way you can adjust the lambda i to satisfy this. It should be given as a constant on sign A. It should be constant, given as a constant on the lower order sign right? That something that you cannot adjust at this order. Because under the lower order sign that you have gotten satisfied with this condition, you cannot solve this. Now, let's see what kind of states VI have this property. Okay, that VI um, cube is equal to 0. One choice, of course, is that when VI is a QB lambda. Then this satisfies QB VI equal to 0. But if VI has this form, then you can take QB to the other side, okay, up to a side, it doesn't actually 
the reference. You can take Q to the other side. And then you have to check if Q be acting on this branches. <coughs> and that we already checked yesterday. Okay, if you remember, okay, we showed that Q be acting on this sum. Okay. It's actually a order GS to the L plus 2 as a consequence of the fact that psi L satisfies a lower order so at least for these states you don't have to worry. For this is all. Okay. So only other class of states which can possibly satisfy this are physical states. So V i So physical state, I can write the sum over the R and R. Expansion GS to be. Otherwise, I'm saying that 
this term vi you can also see Have a shy classical, you can get VI or by anything. By anything. But here I have chosen to map and take the k for VI and satisfy this. Right? So which means a 0 classical or 0 state already. K equal to 0 state. Right? Same thing. And also is that can we write VI as, as that series GS and GS2 and GS2? No, VI is an arbitrary basis. VI is not dependent on the side that. Right? See, this, is, this has to hold, this equation that I have given has to hold as, a, as an equation in the Hilbert space. Right? And the uh, things that you can address are the coefficient psi. Okay? The question is, can you address the coefficients of expansion of psi n to satisfy this equation? Right? We have said that up to order gs to the L, okay, we have found our psi n which satisfies the equation to order gs to the L. Now we are trying to look for psi n plus 1, right? So finding psi n plus 1 means finding infinite number of coefficients because each psi n has an expansion in the full basis. Okay? But most of the coefficients are already fully determined by this. Right? So one that is not determined are the coefficients that come in the expansion of phi n plus 1. But this has to be expanded in the basis of n0 plus equal to 0 states. Because this satisfies p phi n plus 1 equal to phi n plus 1, right? So now we are saying that let's try to verify that. See, if you take any other basis state, okay, which is not L0 plus equal to 0, okay, can take the matrix element with this. Okay. It is already guaranteed that that equation is satisfied because it has been constructed to do that. Okay. It has been constructed so that the matrix element of the L0 plus not equal to 0 state with the equation of motion, which is here, is automatically satisfied. So the only we have to worry about whether the matrix element to the L0 plus equal to 0 state holds or not. Okay. And that you can do by adjusting phi n plus 1. But what it is saying is that there are constraints that come which don't involve phi n plus 1 at all. So there is nothing that you can adjust to satisfy this. Is this clear? Okay, we will see that there is something you can adjust but it is not visible as yet. Yeah, at this day it looks like that once you have gotten up to psi L, okay, it's a condition that either holds or doesn't hold. <coughs> if it doesn't hold, that means that there is a massless stack pull, okay, and that makes the background inconsistent. Okay? You cannot do anything about those massless stack pulls. If it holds, then it's good. You can extend the solution to that order. Right? And then you have to again watch whether that the next order similar condition holds or not. Okay? If it doesn't hold, that means there will be a massless stack pull after the next order. So this is the way you see that possible type codes, okay? possible divergences that you normally see in string wall shape theory. Okay? In this language, you will not see them as divergences, you will see them as obstructions to solving the classical equations. Okay? To obstruction to finding the background phase type of the background string field of the so I, I didn't understand the ring. So why it should be maskless? Uh, so the problem is only for maskless characters. And yeah, why is it maskless? Yeah, the point is you, we have constructed this, right? and this has been constructed so that the corresponding equation, which is QB, uh, yes, okay. it's with the projector on the mass. Yeah, it automatically is, is holds. the equation you want to satisfy and this has been constructed so that the matrix element of this with any state at level not massless level right? any state which is which is not an against the p with i equal 1 right which is project which is orthogonal to the subspace it is automatically satisfied right? that's but this this is the solution that so the only possible obstruction now comes come from massless states. L0 plus equal to 0 states. Right? We are not calling the massless to be given, but the L0 plus equal to 0 state. And that's what you are saying here. Yeah. L0 plus equal to 0 state at k equal to 0. Right? What are they? They are the vortex of of massless physical states at k equal to 0. 
Okay, because you have already removed yourself the pure gates case. Okay, the pure gates case on, on automatically satisfied key value analysis for this law. But once you have removed them, then you are only left with physical states, elements of reality homology. In the 0 plus equal to 0 case, equal to 0 set, right? And those are the physical massless states. And so, and you, you made the map preserving with the equation of motion? Uh, with, uh, uh, with respect to this uh, massless uh, scale that you can That's right, yes. So, can you say it again? Yeah, so the point is that yeah. why is it the equation of motion for the massless scale? So let's look at the original action. This one thing I Final action that you gave. Oh, this MS sector. Oh, final action. Final action that I gave. Yeah. When? Yeah, just uh, PS to PS class. So that is just two classes. Right, so what are the relations between psi tilde and psi? Yes. So there is in psi tilde was in the Ramon sector. Uh, that uh, other yeah. Yeah. So psi tilde belong to H minus one plus so, H minus three. Yeah, yeah. So you are talking about the psi tilde. Okay. So you, the point in the inner sector, right? You can just say psi tilde equal to psi and be done, right? Because there is a trivial solution psi tilde equal to psi. Yeah. So for inner sector, you don't need it. Okay? Yes. But if you wanted it, you could put psi tilde. Yeah. So yeah. let's just work with this. Okay, by setting psi tilde equal to psi. Yeah. So then delta s, one pi, will be one over g s square, then delta psi, c naught minus. And then you have UV psi plus psi equal to 1 to infinity, 1 to infinity minus 1 to infinity, psi to infinity minus 1. So, okay, I'm just trying to see how to get the equation of motion from this action, okay, which we didn't go through. Carefully, but so take the one guy action very, which has to be sum. Okay, psi of psi plus delta psi. So the quadratic term we have delta psi of this. This term has now given delta psi times psi to the n minus 1. Okay, but that I wrote as a, a matrix element between delta psi, c0 minus, and psi to the n minus 1, using relation to the square bracket on the cardinal. Okay, and then we said that for arbitrary delta psi, this was vanish. Yeah, because it has to work, uh, uh, delta has to vanish for arbitrary delta psi and hence this vanishing is the equation of motion. But if you think of delta psi as being expanded in the basis, okay, suppose delta psi be expanded in the basis, psi r, delta psi r phi. Then the coefficient of delta psi are vanishing is the same equation with the matrix element taken with respect to phi. So psi r equation, psi r equation is the matrix element of phi r. C0 minus in B side is some. 
to this guy. So instead of looking at the abstract equation of motion, okay, which is this uh, statement in the Hilbert space, if you take the matrix element of that equation of motion with any state phi r, that's just one equation. Okay? And you can ask what equation it is, right? It must be coming from some field equation, some field equation, right? Some field equation for some variable. Okay? That's the equation for the variable psi. Because this is what you get to a value with respect to psi. Is that clear? So here we are looking at the matrix element of the equation of this set with this particular state here. Okay. So if you want to ask where is this condition coming from, right? what is this um, condition physically mean? Okay. This condition is the equation of motion for the variable that will multiply vi in the expansion of sun. Right? Just like here the general matrix element is phi r. It present the equation of motion with respect to the variable psi, right? the component that multiplies phi r. So from this you see that this equation must be the equation of motion for the variable that multiplies vi. And that is the mode of the massless field. That is the zero moment of mode of the massless field. Right? When you expand psi in a basis, right? what multiplies vi? Right? Vi is an a0 plus equal to 0 state, k equal to 0 state. So that is the massless field, the zero moment of mode, mode of the massless field. So for this reason, these equations that we are getting here, we interpret as being the equation of motion for the zero momentum mode of the masses. Is that part clear? Okay, so this is how we associate each independent constant that comes from the equation of um, motion, that is abstract equation of motion, with the equation of motion some or some specific component of the state. Which in this case happens to the last state. Is that the order of G is also visible in this? Uh, no, this is a fully abstract equation. Right? I have an expanded yes, for all uh, expansion. Right? So I have not looked, mm -hmm. looked at a specific order in GS. But any order in GS, if you want. When you take the matrix element of the equation of motion with phi r, that it's always the equation that comes from the variation of the coefficient that multiplies, that multiplies phi r. So here, because this is coming from whichever order it is, as long as it's coming from matrix element to vi, that is the equation of motion for the masses. Since, since vi and psi n plus 1 are the same, then what Expand phi n plus 1 in terms of vi. Yeah, because what is the important point is that vi has both number 2, psi also has both number 2. So it's the same basis. Right? Otherwise, there will be some more complication. Right? Here, the interpretation is very clear because vi actually is in the same Hilbert uh, space with psi becomes. Okay, so let's return to this. So what we are saying is that this is a condition that has to be satisfied. Okay, if it is not satisfied, that means you are not being able to solve the massless field equations at that particular order. Okay, if you in the conventional perturbation theory, that amounts to including the complication that could come from the spatial a0 plus equal to 0 set. Okay, if you didn't separate out the phi l part. Okay, and it need just as one more zero plus times what we had earlier okay. initially. Then of course you will not see this problem because this problem came by looking for the solution in the zero plus equal to zero set. Okay. But there you will run into the problem because the quadrosion theory will diverge. Okay, what we see here is that the quadrosion theory is not divergent. Okay. Well, it, it is divergent, but the divergence is because you have done something wrong. Right? You should have. First, solve the equation of motion to find the right now. Right? If the background doesn't exist, then what part of the theory are you doing? Right? And that's why that, that's what shows up as divergence in the uh, stack. Okay, now let's go back to this equation. And let's suppose that this consistency condition is satisfied. Okay, now there's no obstruction to that this actually vanishes for all the time. <laughs> Okay. 
Now that means what? That means that to begin with, okay, we have said that they are equal number of variables and constants. Okay. Now we are saying that some of the constants are automatically satisfied. Right? Because they don't fix the variables that comes inside phi anyway. Okay. Some of the constants are automatically satisfied. So that means that some of the variables of that constant. Okay. Because there are equal number of variables as constants. Okay. If some constants are automatically satisfied, right, then the corresponding variables must be unconstant. Right? They must, they are, you can choose them from anything that way. Okay. In this language, this means that this lambda i a plus 1 can you take chosen argument. Then because lambda i a plus not all lambda i a plus 1, okay. but part of this, okay, but all lambda i a plus 1, because uh, we will see that all lambda i a plus 1 can be chosen arbitrarily, okay. but the number matches. Okay. The number of lambda i a plus 1 is precisely the number of physical states we have. Okay. Right. Vi would accept the physical states. Let me. Right. Lambda i a plus 1 will really come from these states. Yeah, let me, let me do the following. Okay, let, let's, let, let me go through this anyway. Okay. So, let's go back to this equation. Okay, that, which is that. And suppose, suppose that i0 l plus 1 is a solution. Is a solution. Okay. From this general argument that I get, there's a counting argument. We know that phi 0 l plus 1 cannot be unitary determined. Okay. If it's a solution, then it cannot be unitary determined because there are less number of constraints than number of variables. So what is this ambiguity? That ambiguity is not hard to see. It's simply the point that phi 0 a plus 1 plus gs to the a plus 1 lambda i lambda what they call the lambda r Yeah, because the number of masses is scalar, because this is exactly the same number, right? Where 
This number is equal to the number of physical massless scalars. Okay. Okay. Here, of course, you could have also add tensors and uh, vectors, right? But tensors and vectors are great. There's no Lorentz invariance. So, if you want to find a class, high class, which preserves Lorentz invariance, you will only add scalars. So, this number, the number of one, uh, independent parameters that you can adjust, is exactly the same as the number of the ambiguity that you have. The, uh, the number of constants that have reduced. Right? Because what you are saying is that for vi, given by any arbitrary real comparison of these, the, these particular equations do not involve high L plus 1. Why are you multiplying these with a plus one? Because without that also this will be zero. Yeah, without that this will be zero. But if you add GS to the L, right, that would correspond to also changing psi L. The original psi L. Original psi L. Because psi L get, gets contribution up to GS to the L, right? So you don't want to add something of order GS to the L because that will change psi L. Okay. And if you change psi L, okay, that's in fact going to be an important part. If you change psi L, then of course, this constant depends on that, right? It depends on psi L. It doesn't depend on psi L plus 1. So you, can, you have no freedom at this level okay, to adjust terms of order up to order J S to the L. Right? But that freedom we already have used earlier. Right? Because in the earlier step, when you constructed psi L, you would have encountered exactly the same situation. Right? And in the definition of psi L, you would have added an order J S to the L. Well, VI could also involve uh, pure gate states, right? Because QB on VI equal to zero means that VI is a linear combination of. Yeah, so pure gate states can also. Yeah, yeah, pure gate states can also be added, right? But as I was telling to the brother, they have already been added in the form of SR plus one, SL plus one, right? So you can add pure gate states, but that uh, is not going to uh, give anything new other than what you have already added. And pure gate states you understand because pure gate states it should be able to act because given any solution you can be a So this is the seed from which you can build up the full gate structure. So I didn't understand the number of uh, number that reduces lambda i a plus one. Okay. So see this to begin with had if we are you span over all L0 plus equal to 0 scale, there are equal number of equations that will have as there are number of variables. Okay. Because the number of variables, i L plus 1, you can also expand in the same basis. Right? Now we are saying that for some of the VIs, this equation is automatically satisfied. Right? What are those VIs? Okay, those VIs are these physical state contributions. Right? For this physical value to put it, he has to make this, then the equations are automatically satisfied. Okay? So this means that for those VIs, there is no new constant. Okay? So that's a reduction in the number of constants you have. Yeah? So for every massless scalar, you have one constant less. It's also true for massless vectors and tensors, but those you are not talking because those will be trivial. <laughs> but every scale, massless scalar, right? Okay. You could have gotten a constant, but that's not there. Because if it's there, then you cannot solve the equation anymore, right? If it's not there, then it has a constant on the lambdas. So that's the reduction in the number of constants. And this is the ambiguity. That if you have reduced the number of constants, then the final solution must have some extra parameters, right? which reflect that the number of constants is less than the number of equations. And there are besides those with extra parameters. This part here. Now this may look a little confusing, but the physics actually is not very hard to understand. Okay, what it is saying is that when you do an iterative solution, right? See, we will try to find an iterative solution, right? So which basically means what? In terms of the field theory, you have a potential like half. M square phi square 
plus e5. Okay, by this contents u b and my rod points. When you are trying to solve an equation, the equation of motion, the equation of motion will be m squared 5 plus b prime 5 for the same. Okay. And the iterative procedure that we have used, right, that corresponds to basically taking b prime 5 on the other side. Right, this is the m square 5 to minus e prime 5. And then iterate to it. Okay, first solve for 5 equal to minus 1 over m square b prime 5. Well, that 5 can be 5 equal to 0 because we start from 5 equal to 0. Then you put it back here, then u5 right, and evaluate it again and so on. So this procedure works quite well if m square is non zero. Okay. But this of course doesn't work when m square is equal to 0. Right? If you have to implement this for x square equal to 0, either b prime 5 equal to 0 or the solution doesn't exist. So that corresponds to n0 plus 0 states in the non-trivial mass. That's why we are... Uh, exactly. So m square equal to 0 states or the n0 plus equal to 0 states. Right? So massless fields okay, are special because those characters are all iterated like this. Right? That those require that some things are already are identical zero. This is clear. <coughs> okay. So now we can consider several situations. So 
क्योंकि आगे सामने ऑल द लैम्बडा यस शुड बी फाइंड ऑर्डर सो दिस यू कैन थिंक ऑफ दिस एज द जीएस डिपेंडेंट नीड ऑफ मास स्केलर्स Right, because this is what will multiply lambda is the s is what will what will multiply or lambda r the s I call the lambda r. Right? This will multiply the state phi phi of this. Right? So it's natural to call this. The after we sum over all order, okay, this is what will multiply the state phi of this. So this is the GS dependent map. And the abstract problem there is that we want to determine this. Okay, or see if this is an unit. That we are doing a partial expansion in GS, but the question we are asking is that requiring that all the equations for motion are satisfied. Do we get that they are satisfied for no value of lambda, or some value of lambda, or all value of lambda? Then these are different possibilities. Yeah. So case one is for equation of motion hold for all lambda. Okay, we basically mean that irrespective of what we have chosen, lambda we have chosen at lower order. This is always fine. This is always fine. And if it continues to all orders, then lambda G S is not fixed. So, do you know such situation in state theory? Yeah, I mean the doesn't matter what active expression value of the field you give, right? It's uh, it's hard, hard, hard to choose. So in super symmetric theory, there are plenty of examples. Say, the, suppose you have a compact field and a torus. The size of the torus is a scalar field. You can take this to any arbitrary function of the coupling constant. Right? You can take to any yeah, in particular function of the coupling constant. And in its solution, right? the size of the torus is not fixed by the equation. Right? The equation of holds irrespective of what the size of the torus is. Is this clear? Well, at least that's what we expect. Right? This is something we will Google. But the expectation is that because you have so much force making, that irrespective of what size torus you choose, we should be able to define the strength. Right? Which means all that holds vanish. Right. And so this that will fall under this case one. So case two will be that equations of motion do not hold for any choice.
Here is an inconsistent value. So typically this will happen. Happen if, for example, at three level you take super symmetry, right? Suppose you have chosen a background. You need super symmetry is broken at three level. Yeah, it must simply be a conformal phase theory. There's a compactive equation on some simple uh, uh, sphere or some manifold which has a, which is rigid flat. Okay, so that solves the equation of motion. But it simply is not super symmetry. Then what is going to happen is the one loop correction, so generated the potential for the delay one. Yeah, typically it's rather a potential. So there is no value of the string coupling for the, of the dilaton field for which it is a solution. So if supersymmetry is broken badly at the beginning, at three level, then something like this will happen. So that you will not find any solution. Yes, after the after the three level. Basically, typically at one loop order itself it will generate a tag pole. Yeah, and you will see this problem that at one loop order you cannot satisfy it. If we have tried to do the same thing for bosonic string, this will case two will also happen here, right? Yes, exactly. The case will happen there. For bosonic string, the delay one again will be will be generated a potential. Yeah, and hence uh, it will not start solving this. See case one is very hard to prove because to prove case one you have to actually go to all orders of order okay? because case one the fact that that equation of motion for for all lambda r okay, is hard because even if you have solved shown that after a given order the equation of motion or motion board that no potential is generated the delta one doesn't arrive okay? that doesn't say anything about the next order okay? so unless you have some general arguments why the potential should be vanishing and that massless field shouldn't get potential. Right? Typically, whenever you have a massless field which, whose potential is trapped to begin with, it's a cause of headache because you never know whether it will get, get a potential at some order. Right? And once it gets a potential at some order, then typically it's a right? The potential may not be Case 3 in fact is the most interesting one. And this is the equation of motion. Assume that for this is 
this holds up to some order. As in, so that it is ambiguous to not determine for So that order you can now uh, introduce lambda, right? Yeah, so up to that order, the values of the lambda are not specified. Are not really specified. But when you go to higher order, mm -hmm. right? Then you will find that lambda and that order get fixed. Because the higher order terms, equation of motion, involve the lambda as a lower order. Right? So, and when you are trying to look for the equation of motion, say order g square, right? you may find that lambda to order g square is unfixed. Okay? But when you are looking for equation of motion at order g s to be 4, you may find that lambda, lambda at order g square that you have introduced that you have thought was un, un, undetermined. Right? That actually gets fixed. But unless that lambda has some specific form, right? the order gs to be 4 cannot be used. Is this clear? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, another way of saying this is that the way we have solved this, we have converted this as a nonlinear problem, right? but we have actually converted it to a linear problem. Because by this iterative procedure, right, you always solve the linear equation. Right, instead of a non-linear equation, because the non-linear part you are evaluating explicitly in terms of the lower order okay. This you can do except for the master splits. Okay. For the master splits, you have to genuinely solve the non-linear equation. Okay. And that is precisely because of the fact that this m square phi square, that this term will have set down in the case of master splits. Right? So you cannot convert a hitra phi equal to zero uh, equation into a linear term by iterative process. And that's what, we are, that's what is getting reflected by uh, this procedure that you may feel that the equation of motion for phi is satisfied to give an order okay, without uh, specifying the value of phi, but at higher order it will come back. Is this clear? So let's look at an example in terms of phi. Okay, um, this is a critical example I'll do, but um, eventually next week I'll describe a specific thing for example about this happens. Okay, because that's why one really needs to use the full power of this uh, formalism, okay, which you cannot get by the standard one. Okay. So suppose we have a scalar field okay, of the of Scalar field. The equations are then it might be that for finite number of values of the value may be specific. More than one value. More than one value may be yes. So let's suppose that we have a scalar field with the following kind of point. Let's say it's A1 GS plus A2 GS. 
ds squared plus both with ds cubed and so on. And you will try to determine the coefficients a r, a q, a p, etc. by looking at the corresponding equations of motion to order gs, to order gs square, to order gs cube and so on. So suppose you are working at order gs, order gs. I equal to one yes. Does this satisfy equation of motion to order GS? Yes. If that, that this is order GS cube, this is order GS cube. So no problem, at the order GS will conclude that this satisfies the equation of motion to order GS. Yes. Order GS square is the same. GS square will add to phi a1 GS plus a2 GS square. And you see that each term here starts at least at order gs cube. Okay. So order gs square equation is also satisfied. Okay. So you conclude that the add arbitrary coefficient <laughs> up here to gs square. Okay. So nothing gets fixed up to order gs square. Now you come to order gs cube. Order gs cube. No, because we expect of what a1 is. This is gs cube, this is gs cube. So order gs there is no constant that way. Right? Yeah, it's next order also. Order gs square also there is a constant. But when you go to the equation of solving equation of motion order gs cube, we see that this gets a contribution of the form a a1 cube. Gs cube. And this gets a contribution minus d a one gs cube. Okay, this is only our gs cube contribution to the equation. This this terms are let's say. Because in phi q, because it will be like order g s cube four, and so on. Right? order g s cube these are the only terms. And now you see that this doesn't hold. This is not zero for arbitrary a one. Right? So even though you had thought that after order g s square a one and a two can be fixed arbitrarily, right? when you come to order g s cube, we find that unless you choose a one appropriately, you will not satisfy it. And that's the kind of thing that we have seen there. So this tells us that e1 square, e1 is either 0 or plus minus square root of e1. Okay. And then you can continue it to higher order. Right? And you can conclude that a2, a3, etc. All zero. Because this we know, of course, is the exact solution right, to the field equation. So, uh, first order in GS, uh, it seems that A1 equals to GS. <laughs> As in the first order of in GS, yeah. So, you keep up to A1 GS yeah. and you try to look for the equation of motion to order GS. Yeah, so, then it will be A1 cube equal to GS. No, because A1 cube coefficient is GS cube. You are not even looking at that GS cube. Yeah. See, because we are looking at the equation of motion to order GS, right? Yeah. yeah. So the equation of motion, right? The leading contribution for this kind of answer. So order GS in of that equation. Exactly. That's right. Because if you recall what you are doing in the context of strength field theory, right? You are looking at the equation of motion to a given order, right? Correction to the equation of motion of order gs to the l plus q are ignored. So the order gs of the equation, there is no contribution, right? So that's why you will So the fact that a1 is fixed, you will not see an order gs, you will not see an order gs square. And you will see it when you go to order gs cube. Right? And that's where the nonlinearity is at. Right? These are nonlinear equations for a1. 
and it's coming because the A1 cube, right, it had already appeared in an earlier step. So it is quite possible that you will get multiple instructions for A1. In fact, this is a draw scalar field theory, but precisely something like this happens in some uh, uh, string theory context. Okay. In fact, here you can also see why we did take the expansion not in powers of gs square but in powers of gs. See, you know, I have said the naively you would have thought that because the expansion of the potential of the action is in parts of gs square. Okay. It will be natural that you take the uh, classical solution as an expansion in parts of gs square. If you had done that in this example, okay. what you have to conclude is that the only solution is phi equal to zero. Okay. Because if you are entering inside a on gs square from a to gs to the 4, a3 gs to the 6, etc., you will never be able to uh, find a solution. Okay. Because order gs cube, or at some order, you will simply find that you are not being able to match coefficients. So, whatever gs to root gs? Yes, so in some cases you may get that. Right? So that's why I said that, I mean, uh, the no examples in string theory doesn't uh, encounter things like root gs. But certainly it's possible that more, in more complicated string background, right, that you will get even scalar field vacuum expression or order gs, or, or root gs. Right? And it is still part of it. See the vacuum expression value of order 1 or order 1 over gs. Right? That's also possible. But those you cannot treat part of it. Right? Because they are really order 1 shift from the original background. Right? Anything which goes as some part, wasn't it part of gs? You can treat part of it. Right? But you have to be careful. Right? It's not a standard conventional part of the theory. Right? Because standard conventional part of the theory will always expand in parts of gs. Why are you saying that, or why are these nonlinearities appearing in, at this order? Mm -hmm. Is it significant or important? Because that's the only place where nonlinearity could come. Otherwise, the way you are determining, see, if the L0 plus equal to 0 state was out there, mm -hmm. okay, then you only have to solve a linear equation at this stage. Okay? Because you are determining psi A plus 1 as a linear operator acting on some you know, polynomial in psi right? Because psi has already been determined. Okay? So that can never give you fractional power of yes. Right? It's only when you have to actually solve an nonlinear equation, right, like this, that there is a possibility that you can get fractional power of GS or odd power of GS in this case, and not only even power of GS. What are missing that the solution is unconstrained, but hold it up to all order, we see that there must be some constraint. Yes, so the point is, no. If you are allowed only even order, for example, right? Then you will find, for example, that order gs to the four, right? you cannot satisfy it. Because what will happen at order gs to the four? Suppose you start with one gs square. Here you will get b gs to the four, right? But this will be of order gs to the six. Right? So you cannot just solve this equation. The only solution there will be r equal to zero. So this is a general procedure that we are using, right? So what we are doing in string theory is not something unusual. It's just that because we are using solving in part of it, okay? we have to carefully keep track of these extra issues that could happen. Okay? If we didn't take into account the extra issues, if we are just written a solution as one over e zero plus over e zero plus times that square bracket, okay? that you can show corresponds to conventional part of it. And that also explains why conventional part of theory encounters divergence. Because that step itself is wrong because 1 over del 0 plus is not well defined on states of L0 plus equal to 0. Right? So if you have done some step wrong in the middle, right, then that propagates and that enters your final part of the expansion expansion right? in the form of a divergence. But the correct procedure is to separate out the L0 plus equal to 0 states, solve for them separately. It may still happen that you are not being able to solve for them. Right? In this case, you have to declare that you are being consistent. But sometimes you may be able to solve them and make a consistent theory. Whereas if you are just following conventional part of theory, 
Okay, you would have still concluded that the theory is inconsistent because you have that proofs. <coughs> so maybe I'll stop here. So tomorrow I'll carry out the next step, which is that given a solution side class, right? So this explains how to find look for new classical solutions. Okay. The next step is to expand the action around new classical solution. Okay. Look at the quadratic part. Okay, and study the normal analysis because the quadratic part, the okay, solution to the linearized equations in this background will tell us about the normal analysis. Okay. And again, we will see that there is a systematic procedure for determining the normal analysis in part okay. So instead of saying that there is an abstract linear operator which you have, whose eigenvalues you have to find, we will see that how to actually develop a systematic scheme that tells how to calculate the normal analysis to any given order. Thank you.